Welcome to Eco SY. Today we have a hero conversation and we have with us Dan Carnavali, who is the Power Systems Experience Center Manager at Eaton. So welcome, Dan. Hey, thanks, Chris. I'm Appreciate having, having me. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to having it here. I, I met you a few years ago when I got a chance to actually come to the Experience Center. And uh, for those who haven't, we'll make sure we have the links in the show notes because it is it is a trip worthwhile. I, I had so much fun. I always remember that uh, lightning strike and the tree breaking. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely a popular one here on the on the uh, Disneyland for engineers kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So people always remember those kind of things. It was awesome. It was a ton of fun. But, you know, in this conversation, man, we just want to get to know you. And we'd love to start these hero conversations off by just giving you a chance to share about your journey. Sure. Well, um, so when I, I went through undergrad and master's in power systems, and I interviewed with Westinghouse. So I was excited to you know, come to Pittsburgh, the center for all things Westinghouse. And right before I started, ABB had bought that division. So, um, so I worked for them for a while and it was great. You know, I did a lot of utility work, mostly utility power quality work, trying to understand when you know, large substrates and transformers or capacitors and stuff blow up. And then I actually moved down with ABB to your area down there in Raleigh. And I, I lived there for a little bit. And then I, <clears throat> when I got married, I moved back to Pittsburgh and worked for a different part of Westinghouse, which was the industrial and commercial kind of power systems group. And, um, and then that group um, in 1998 um, went away and we ended up going to uh, a group with Eaton, which had previously bought some of the other parts of Westinghouse. So it all kind of has Westinghouse roots in it. And, it, and it's been kind of a fun journey. Um, so I worked in the parts, in the industrial and commercial part to troubleshoot power quality stuff for a long time. And then in about 2001, I got drafted into a group and I say drafted, they put me in a group that was marketing. And I was like, here, I'm a power systems engineer. I don't, I don't know what marketing is. I don't understand that, you know? So I, uh, I kind of pushed back a little bit, but actually, to be honest with you, Chris, like I had a lot of fun um, transitioning from there and, and ended up basically starting the power systems experience center based on the fact that I had a lot of um, leeway in, in what, what I was allowed to do. And uh, it's been just a blast ever since. Man, that is awesome. Now where, so just for the listeners, where'd you go to school at again? So I went to Gannon in Erie. Um, there was a professor there that was awesome. He was in power systems, uh, Jerry Salvaggi, and he, he kind of had a path to um, Rensselaer, uh, you know, RPI up in Troy, New York. And uh, so we, we went right from there to a master's program at RPI. And, um, you know, having a power systems background was kind of key to pull me into the kind of things that I've learned and done over the years. But it, it kind of gave me a real good uh, head start on, on these things. Yeah, that's fun. I mean, I guess, and then that chance where you got to work with marketing, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing more marketing myself these days. And I, I, I found it has stretched me to just to new areas of my thoughts and just the way that I look at the world. I mean, I'm sure you had very similar experiences with your, uh, with your time in the marketing group. I did. And I, um, I actually went and got an MBA after I started in the group to really understand a little bit more about, you know, kind of the business side of it. So, um, it really helped tie things together for me. I think that's, that's really the key is, you know, having the technical background and then kind of the business background, you know, and then, and then being able to talk to customers and really kind of helping people understand and solve problems you know, it was kind of a natural fit for me. So it, it I didn't, even though I pushed back on it, it, it probably was the right thing for me to do. No doubt, no doubt. And you, you know, I know you guys have, I, I forget the stats on how many people come through the Experience Center on a typical year. Obviously last year was not a, a, a very typical year, but you know, you get a lot of feedback in the industry. So what, what are you hearing? What are you hearing out there that the industry is challenging, is challenged with the most? Yeah, so Chris, we get probably seven or 8,000 visitors a year that come through here. It's almost like a destination. I don't know if people come on, on you know, electrical vacation here, I suppose. But when they come through, I think the biggest thing that we're seeing is sort of a loss of industry experts. I think that the fact that a lot of the people that I met along the way, the people that I've worked with that were kind of those keys, you know, people in Westinghouse or Eaton, you know, that were like the leaders in the industry, they're retiring retiring or retired and so you know kind of passing on that information from them is a really a diff difficult thing and then really the other part of it is we have sort of this digital transformation i mean we're moving from 
you know, everything that's kind of, you know, motors and, you know, transformers and traditional kind of equipment in the electrical industry. And now we're going to variable frequency drives and, you know, um, you know, power converters and things like that that are doing solar and wind and, you know, this whole energy transition thing. I mean, that's a sources of multiple power, you know, microgrids, all that stuff. That's, that's the stuff that people are, you know, really need to understand and, and kind of get familiar with. And I think that's the, the major trends, you know, that with energy storage and, you know, all the stuff with electric vehicles that it's, it's, it's a huge kind of transition in our business, but it's, it's really a fun one as well. And we're hearing the same thing, Dan. We talked to a lot of people that loss of those experts, mm -hmm. that's a real deal. I mean, and that's, and, and you got to get ahead of it in industry. I love your approach or what you guys are doing with videos to help bring the education up for that next generation. But uh, it, it definitely not surprised to hear that one. And everybody's talking digital transformation. The question is like, where do you start? How do you get it going? And uh, how can you actually make money with it and, as a business, you know, and, and not just be this, you know, fluff actually improve my process. So it sounds like you're having a, a lot of the conversations that, uh, that are, that are helping people that we're hearing the same stuff here on, on the show. Absolutely. And I think some of the, some of the larger customers and some of the, you know, the people, even within Eaton, I mean, we've, we've changed sort of how we do things in some of our plants. So that's a really key thing to really think ahead of how does this affect us, you know, in, in our own facilities and how are we going to make, you know, do with the electricity available to us today? Right. Right. Now for the people that, you know, we're trying to reach this Dan too, for the next generation, they're trying to encourage them about industry and to come in any advice you have or that you, that you typically share with, with people when they're considering a uh, career in industry? Well, I mean, I, I think, and I've heard this from some of the new, uh, new hires that we have at Eaton, which is you know, kind of reinforcing it, but I, they get super excited about it. But I think power is kind of the lifeblood of our, of every business. If you think about it, it's almost like even, even of our lives. I mean, it's almost like food, water, and electricity. It's not far behind those other necessities for life. And, um, I think what we're seeing is, you know, that we're so reliant on it that we need to have a better handle on how it's, you know, transmitted and distributed and, you know, handled locally, you know, microgrid type stuff or stored energy storage type things. Um, with that digitalization he talked about and the energy transition things and all those other industry, you know, trends, I mean, understanding like power systems as a whole. And again, not just individual devices, but the actual system, <clears throat> I think it's super important. So if you have a good understanding of power systems and, you know, the electrical field in general, I mean, you know, either electrician, engineer, anybody that works in that field, I mean, you'll have a job forever, you know, and, and I think that's a, a great thing that, you know, people can think about coming into the industry is, is it's a field that really needs people to, uh, you know, help support that. No doubt. No doubt. Great, great advice. Cause I mean, you're right. If you learn some of these concepts and some of the things that you're teaching, uh, job security is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, that's important. So uh, we love to, to also talk about mentors and the people who've helped us along the way. Does anybody stand out to you when you look back that has, has been influential to you in your career? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. You know, obviously, you know, my parents helped, helped me kind of guide me a little bit. My dad was a teacher and then kind of worked his way through the school system. So I think there's some some evidence of that in some of the videos and the training stuff that I do. Um, but there was one guy that I started out with at uh, ABB that I did a lot of the field work with. And we traveled together for years and um, for, the you know, for a few years. And um, he taught me a ton. And, and it was funny because he would always say that, you know, I'm just a technician, you know, you're not going to learn anything from me. I'm an, you're an engineer kind of thing. And, uh, you know, his, his name was Dave Malone. And, and I'll tell you, he knew more as a, as a, a non-formally trained engineer than any engineer that I knew. And he, you know, he built his own um, system to monitor high frequency and high voltage measurements at a 345 kV substation and, and, you know, done safely. And, you know, we would troubleshoot these things and find issues and solve problems for, for people. And, and to me, that was a, a huge deal. And, you know, even though he didn't put himself on a pedestal, I certainly did. And, and I thought it was great. And the other guy that, that I worked with here at Westinghouse and then at, at Eaton um, was Dave Ship. And I don't know if you know that name, but he's, he's also kind of one of these industry experts that he's, he's just phenomenal as far as stuff. And I'll tell you a funny story. When I first started at Westinghouse, I moved back from Raleigh to Pittsburgh 
you know, and, and here's, I'm getting, getting married in, in a few weeks. And I, I told my soon to be wife, Lisa, I said, you know, I went into work today and she goes, how was it? She, and I said, well, you know, I met this guy named Dave Ship, and he walked right up to me and he, he stood up and he shook my hand and he said, hi, new guy, young guy. He goes, uh, you're a uh, new, he goes, I forget what he said, but he said something to the effect of, uh, um, I'm David Ship, and he goes, you probably come across stuff that you don't know. And he goes, and before you go looking it up in a book or something like that, just come ask me. I probably already know. And I thought, wow. And I went home and I told my wife that. And I said, what an area. Of guy. You know, but then I learned that he was right. Like he knew he knew so much about everything. And I'll tell you, he, yeah, I really respect the guy. I mean, he he knows so much and just was really great mentor to me and, and helped me kind of learn about power quality and some of the really crazy stuff with harmonics and you know, transients and mutual coupling and, and crazy kind of situations that we would do troubleshooting on in the oil fields and stuff like that. So those are the kind of people that I really, you know, thank, you know, here in, in looking back. No doubt. So it sounds like he was more than willing to share that information with you as well. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it, it was funny because I, I, I tease my wife. I'm like, you know, he's like real arrogant, but he wasn't arrogant at all. And if anybody's ever met Dave, he's like the, the opposite of arrogant. He just is super helpful, but he just wants you to learn and know. And, and that's kind of what I, I try to aspire to be is like somebody that can help other people without kind of having anything in it for me. Cause I, you know, at this point, I, you know, it's more about trying to help other people succeed. No doubt, man. That's great. That's great. Now what, how about for the, the, the young person who may be thinking about engineering and thinking about that field and they have this, perception in their mind about what it, what it really is are there any myths out there that you'd like to just destroy right now about where what what this actually is yeah i mean i you know first of all not all engineers are nerds just some of us right um that's the the big thing is like it's just one of those things where people are like you know really engineering but honestly like i i think the electrical gets a bad rap because it's like you have to have a strange sense of things to really get it and understand it but once you do, you're like, this is this is actually really cool. Um, and we had a president in, in Eaton here that that um, used to tell the story that he had two daughters and he said, I don't care what you want to become, but you're going to be an engineer first. And and they were like, well, why? And he said, because if you become an engineer, you can do a lot of other things after that. But the opposite is not always true. And, and you know, if you think about it, um, what engineers do is they learn how to learn. And so I think it really is a great statement and it, and it, it helps you. If you can do that, you can pretty much do anything. And um, then you have an open mind and you be creative and, and things like that. So I think it's a, it's a great field. Plus, you know, financially you can do well. That's the other thing that I think is, is important when people are guiding their kids or when people are guiding each other into what fields they should go into you know, try to pick something that you're going to be able to make a living at because you know, everybody says, oh, have fun at your job, but it, you'll, you'll have a lot more fun if you actually, you know, make a little bit of money at it and don't have to struggle through. That's that right. Thing. I mean, that financial security means a lot, you know, but I, I love how you're saying, you know, uh, you're just learning how to learn in that engineering field. I mean, that's it. I mean, you're doing a lot in, with, with videos and marketing and, and, and now you, you can do that because you learned how to, how to adapt, how to change. And I mean, that's just great stuff. Great great uh great way to debunk some things there man thanks chris so how about when you're the happiest man if you look at the work that you're doing dan when are you getting that most fulfillment what's bringing you the most joy everybody would tell you you know i'm super passionate when you're here and you you probably saw that i get super excited about having fun here and everything but i really love it when the light bulb goes off in somebody's head and you you know you can kind of see that they get it um i really want to be able to help people understand this complicated thing called electricity right and i think the more people that i kind of draw into that field i think the more um sense of success that i feel so i think that's really the key is just just seeing that light bulb go off in their head that's it man that's it now when you look back over the things you've done in career does anything stand out as a highlight that you'd like to share i mean i think the power systems experience center here in, in pittsburgh i mean that's definitely the highlight and i i did a ton of um, field work in the first part of my career, you know, at ABB was utility power quality work at Westinghouse. And then early at Eaton was, you know, industrial commercial power quality stuff and field investigations and trying to do all that. And that was very gratifying. And I really enjoyed it a lot, but I think it was kind of a springboard to do what I was meant to do, which is the experience center here. 
Um, so what started kind of as a skunk works project in roughly 2004, 2005 um, has become, you know, has become really kind of a world-class thing. And I think it's, it's kind of really, um, you know, benefited a lot of people within Eaton, outside of Eaton. Um, and I think the, the fact that I have, you know, the full support of our management team and everything. And, you know, when we hire a new executive, a lot of times they'll come through here to learn about you know, what, what Eaton does and the electrical group and stuff like that. So to me, that's, that's very gratifying to see what, you know, what we've created. And I say we as, you know, as much as I'd like to say I did, I know obviously it's team, team effort for these kind of things, but it's, it's a great learning experience too. So when I say, you know, my, the highlight of my career, I would really think that this allows me to continue to learn. And as long as I'm learning and having fun, I mean, it, what could be wrong with that? Right. That's right. That's right. And again, if, if you've never had a chance to go and you're listening, check it out, please. It, it, it's worth the, it's worth the trip. Uh, you will not be disappointed and, and uh, learn so much. So man, Dan, uh, we, we thank you for sharing about that highlight. And we also, we love in these hero conversations, man, to get a little bit outside of work, uh, learn about you uh, away from the experience center, man. So any, any hobbies, anything you enjoy doing for fun? I mean, I, I love to hunt and fish. I've always done that. I grew up in North central Pennsylvania, which is, there's really not a whole lot else to do there. So, um, so we did, you know, I've always done that, but I, I find like, you know, right now when I sit in a tree stand or even just walking along a stream or, you know, sitting in a boat or something like that, I mean, I just kind of clear my head. And I think, you know, with the kind of fast pace that we have at work um, lately and with all the craziness in life, I think it, it to me, it's, it's super relaxing and, and I need that, you know, to kind of get recharged. Um, but beyond that, I've, um, I've coached hockey for 14 years, you know, with my boys. Um, so I have four boys that all played hockey and, um, I, I think it made me a better parent, a better teacher, you know, and, and honestly a better employee. Cause I kind of learned how to, you know, the importance of leadership and, you know, from a whole different perspective, but, um, I coached hockey without ever having played hockey. So that was kind of a little bit of a fun challenge, but, um, I used to ice skate and, I give you a little secret. I'm sure you won't tell anybody, but you know, when I first started skating, I told my wife, I said, you know, I never skated except on figure skates because I had four sisters and, and a brother and we didn't have hockey skates. So she's like, you cannot skate with figure skates. You have to use hockey skates. So I had to learn as an adult, how to do a hockey stop. And you. anybody that's ever done a hockey stop, could show you a thousand times over how to do it. So I would go to the rink and I'd say, Hey, how do you do a hockey stop? I'd ask the rink guard. And he'd be like, just like this. And he would do it. I was like, but no, how do you actually do it? Like how to break it down. So as an engineer, I'm thinking, how do you physically do this? Cause it seems awkward to me, you know, and I don't have a toe pick to drag to stop myself. Right. So I figured out that the action of starting your lawnmower is almost the same action as doing a hockey stop. So I kind of, when I started teaching kids how to do hockey stops, I was like, you ever see your dad start the lawnmower and he, he pulls the thing and he twists his body. It's kind of like that. And so I was a little unconventional in my training, but you know, again, all these things blend together to kind of make you the person that you are, but it's been, it's been kind of fun. That's cool, man. That's, that's awesome. I mean, myself, I, I coach, I, but I've coached uh, basketball and I never played basketball growing up. So it's the same thing. There you go. I have to learn the sport, figuring out different analogies to help. You know, I, I was a baseball person. So I'm tr always trying to figure out how do we to make some baseball drills work in basketball. But I mean, it, it definitely helps you for sure. And I just enjoy that piece. And uh, yeah. I'm with you about being outside. Are you, now, are you a deer hunter or yeah. what, what do you hunt? Yeah, a little bit of everything. I mean, we, we mostly hunt deer and, um, and, you know, the, for a small game, we use, um, I have a, I have a dog, Brittany, and I've, I've, you know, done bird hunting with him for, well, I had a, a Brittany for like 12 years and then he died and we just got a recently got another one, uh, another one about a year and a half ago. So he's, but they're, they're just awesome dogs and, and so much fun. So it's more about just kind of going out and doing that, but we do a lot of archery hunting and, um, and, you know, I still go back up to North central part of the state and hunt with my brother and, you know, they're all the cousins get together and stuff like that but but sitting in pittsburgh here we have some of the best deer hunting right in the backyard so we we have a lot of fun with archery hunting and stuff like that as well that's awesome that's awesome now you mentioned some about your family earlier what, what would you like to share with us about it so um my wife is actually went to penn state is a double e um we actually met back when we were both at abb and um that that's how you know kind of we got together but 
um, she actually teaches our field service engineers. So if you saw that, the Jurassic Park uh, video, the one that the, the dinosaur one, so that's her, her in that video with Eric Hurd, and they were talking about doing training. And she actually does the training for the field service people to do like, you know, high pot, meg or doctor, all that kind of stuff. So, so we kind of uh, tied her into that one. Um, but I have five kids, you know, I mentioned the four boys. Um, so my oldest one actually works, he went to Penn State also, and now uh, works in the oil field in West Texas. So he's a petroleum and natural gas engineer. So he's, um, he actually was going to do engine electrical and decided to do petroleum and, and he loves it. So he, you know, he does two weeks on, two weeks off. He comes home and again, we can do some deer hunting stuff together when he's off. And, and when he's out there, um, he just has a blast, you know, with his team. And then I have two at Pitt right now. So there's the Penn State Pitt max, match there. Um, and uh, the two at Pitt, one's in the master's program and he's finishing up. And then the other one is a freshman and he's, they're both double E's though. And, and the older one's doing power and the young one will may probably will do power. Um, and then I have a uh, senior in high school who he's also going to do electrical and he's so as you can imagine, there's this Pitt and Penn State rivalry. And he's like, I might not go to either. I might go to Virginia Tech or go to my, you know, some other college or something like that. So he's just all over the place and thinking about what he's going to do. And then Kendall, who I mentioned and, and uh, talked, maybe I don't know if I talked to you before about her, but she, you know, she's the one that's in the couple of the videos that we've done in the water analogy one and stuff like that. So um, she's, she's a blast. And so having four boys and all of a sudden a girl, um, was a super change in the way that we handled life. And, um, and I used to tell her because we did all this hockey, I said, well, Kendall, when do you want to start playing hockey? And she said, you know, she's like three years old. She's like, I hate hockey. I'm like, you don't hate hockey. You just hate going to the rink. I mean, it's, it's fun. You know, we can, she's like, I don't want to do hockey. So she does gymnastics. And now I think it's maybe a little bit of payback for, um, for me, but I, you know, so I, I love to go to watch her, but the problem is it's like, four minutes of extreme tense, you know, kind of thing to watch her do one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute for the four things. Right. And then it's all on her. If anything goes bad, it's like, oh God. So, so hockey was a lot easier to watch. Somebody screws up, somebody else helps out, you know, it's a team thing, but, but gymnastics has been a, a whole new world for me and having a girl has been a whole new world for me, but she'll probably end up being an engineer too. She's very uh, curious and methodical and stuff like that. And so it's been a blast. And that is awesome, man. It sounds like you have a wonderful family, Dan. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing. How about anything that you enjoy that, that you find helpful? It could be podcasts, YouTube stuff, books, just it could be personal stuff, professional, just anything you'd like to share. Um, you know, well, with COVID and stuff like that, I think the, the one that I think I'd point out to people that they might not know about, or a lot of people have been finding is Tom Dimitrovich. He's also from Eaton, has been doing a great job on YouTube. Um, and doing his live technical sessions. So he'll just say, let's do short circuit calculations today. And every Thursday at five, he does, you know, some kind of calculations or some kind of overview. And, and so he's, he's done a really good job of stuff like that. And um, I think, and he also talks about the NEC stuff and, and you know, things that people can learn from. Um, Mike Holt, Mike Holt's always been good. I mean, he, he's, he's always doing some good training stuff and has some, um, some really good material online and also the stuff that you can go through to learn about the NEC stuff. One of my recent finds that I think is hilarious is Electro Boom. Um, it's hard not to be entertained by by him, but uh, I mean, he just is off the wall, but I mean, he's, he's brilliant. He comes up with some really interesting ways to explain different electrical things. But, uh, you know, he's one of these guys that gets millions and millions of views and it probably deserves it because he's, he's funny and he also is actually really um, a very intelligent guy and talks about some pretty cool stuff as far as books um like empires of light is the one you know the acdc story you know the the you know westinghouse edison kind of you know tesla story and i think that's a that's a good one and, and they made the movie about it um recently but you know kind of a little bit off the wall like um as far as books go you know one of my favorite authors of all time is like a short story guy that um used to write for outdoor life his name's pat manis i don't know if you've ever heard of him or you know heard the stories of him or whatever, but he would write like stories of hunting and fishing or just being a goofy kid. And he would, I would literally like laugh out loud when I would, you know, read some of his stuff. So to me, that was, that was fun. And, um, you know, I think that's how it kind of maybe influenced me a little bit in some, sort of the way I do some of the seminars that I do, or maybe do some of the videos and stuff that I do. 
And um, one of my favorite stories that he did was, um, again, just short story, maybe five, six pages long, but it was like the theory and application of old men. And he would go through and he'd say, you know, like, you know, he'd hang around with all these old woodsmen. He goes, you have to treat them like they're loaded, just like a gun, you know, right. and they could go off at any time. And if you accidentally ask them the wrong question, they will tell you, you know, thousands of different things and go around and tell you the whole history of the world and come back maybe to your original point or maybe not. And I know a couple of retired engineers that literally are exactly that kind of situation. Like if you accidentally ask them about fair residence, or if you ask them about, you know, well, how does a surge protector work? Man, they would just go on and on. And it, so it just makes me crack up when I think about that story and, and all the stuff that McManus wrote. It's just, it, it just kind of a good kind of heartwarming kind of thing to, to read those things. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for those resources. That sounds like you got some fun, some fun ones out there. We'll try to link up some of those in our show notes too, so people want to check them out. Uh, they can they can can go source that for themselves. And we have started doing a lightning round, Dan, and, and that's been kind of fun. It's random stuff, man. So uh, if you're if you're willing to play, we'll we'll have some fun with it. Anything you want to ask? All right, <laughs> I don't know what I'll say. But... Okay, well that's the best part of it. That's uh, we we'll always start easy. Just your favorite food. Uh, I mean everything i love food it's <laughs> so i don't have a favorite. I could, literally everything okay how about uh, adult beverage um miller light okay it's a miller light man i hear you okay so um let's let's go here with music um you know 80s rock kind of stuff that's the era i grew up in and it's funny because the kids are now coming back to that so i'm like hey i can, I can listen to that so what's your favorite 80s rock band uh probably scorpions although like again I'll, I'll say again to kind of qualify that i listen to a lot of country today too so it's a little bit of everything i mean anybody that like but it's funny going through having kids you end up with a lot of these different kind of junk you know scenarios with songs i'm with you so how about now i'm i'm probably going to be able to guess this but your favorite sports teams i'm almost i'm assuming it's pittsburgh related stuff yeah, you know, I, I, it's the Penguins for sure for, for hockey and the Steelers for football. When I first moved to Pittsburgh, I used to like the Oakland Raiders, and um, apparently you're not allowed to do that in Pittsburgh. So I like the Steelers now so for the last however many years, 30 years or whatever. Right. Are, now, are you a Pirates fan for baseball? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Pirates. It's just that it's, you know, we've just not had a lot of success, so it's kind of hard to, you know, be, get too excited about it. You know, you kind of – you know, cautiously optimistic every year, and then you kind of get a little disappointed. So. <laughs> right, right. I hear you, buddy. How about somewhere you've never been, but you'd love to go one day? Um, you know, I've been overseas, but not to like Italy or Australia. I think those would be awesome to go. Awesome. How about the favorite place you have been? Well, uh, we love to go to Siesta Key, you know, western part of the Gulf side on uh, Florida. And, um, we, we, we go to Disney every year. I mean, it, again, it's great it's inspirational stuff to think about how that place has come together and, and all the cool stuff they have there. That's awesome. How about pets? Now you mentioned your, your Brittany dog, any other pets? Yeah. Um, actually, so Jinx is the dog. And then, um, we actually have a turtle here at, at work that my kids caught when it, it was probably like this, like silver dollar size, probably like 15, 18 years ago. And then, you know, he lived for about 15 years. And then one day, it died and I felt horrible. And so about three years ago, we ended up getting another one that's about the size of how, how big he was. So his name's Snappy. He's a snapping turtle. We're not very creative for other stuff we are, but not for that. But anyway, it's a snapping turtle. So he's here and he's, he's awesome to kind of go hang out with and just kind of like look at and feed and stuff. So Now, is that the turtle that's at the experience center? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. My wife kicked him out of the house. He smells. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did you tell me a story while we were there about like he got out the cage or something and the clean oh yeah that new one so we didn't have a lid on the new cage and uh on the new tank and apparently uh you know I was at my daughter's like uh, Christmas recital thing or whatever and um now I keep getting this phone call from from the guy from work and I'm like why is he calling me and I pick up and I'm like what's up and he goes uh the turtle escaped I'm like turtles don't escape like that they're, they're not really like then i gotta run away or whatever well here it pushed the the light off of the top of the tank and like literally crawled out in the, the tank if you remember seeing it it's like five feet off the ground so it, it like fell to the ground and it it crawled over to the door and the poor cleaning lady was there 
And she comes in the door to, to take out the, the garbage and, and that thing surprised her. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was funny, but it was like, then I had to like bolt down the top of the cage. Yeah, so. Right, right. Make sure you didn't get out. <laughs> yeah, it's good memory though. You remember that. <clears throat> yeah, that, I'll remember that turtle story, man. So uh, that, that was, you did a great job for the lightning round. Uh, that was <laughs> fun. We got, to, we got to learn a little bit more about you, Dan. So uh, this has been a fun conversation. You, you're, you're just a, a great guy. I love what you're doing up there. Uh, good partner with eco and, and we call it eco ask why. So we saved the why towards the end and really this is about your passion, man. So what, what would be your personal why? You know, Chris, my personal passion is really like learning, teaching, helping others succeed, like being part of a team that, that wants to kind of grow and be, you know, creative and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we, we have a blast here. Um, you know, I want to leave a legacy, you know, of knowledge for kids that want to learn about stuff. I have a great time working with um, the interns and the co-ops and stuff that, that we, we hire through different universities and places, you know, close to here and, and even uh, mentoring some of the kids that are still in high school and, and younger. You know, I want all these, I want everybody that comes through here to, you know, laugh and learn and really kind of have the same passion, you know, and, and I want them to, you know, to basically love their job like I do. You know, I want them to kind of go to the point, you know, when they're in their career and say, I love my job and I have the best job in the company, you know, and, that, and that's what I would tell people. Just don't tell anybody about that, by the way. So I have the best job at Eaton. So, I mean, if, if somebody could say that, I think you, you're successful. And, um, and people always do, they, they say, you know, you do have the best job at Eaton. And I, and I totally agree with them. I mean, it's not a doubt, but the thing is they don't see me cleaning the turtle tank and doing all the backwards stuff, but right. it's, you know, it, it's fun. It's, it's like, that's my passion is to really, you know, live life, you know, love doing what you're doing, have fun and, and, uh, just help others and, and do that kind of thing and, and talk to people like you, Chris. I mean, it's, this has been fun. I, I enjoy that kind of thing and you guys are doing a great job down there. So keep it up. Well, we really appreciate it, man. You're definitely, this has been a, a very fun conversation for me. It brought back a lot of memories of going to Pittsburgh and, you know, Dan, thank you for sharing so much with our listeners. Uh, just really enjoyed this time with you. Thanks a lot, Chris. I, I really look forward to talking to you again and come back uh, when you can. We got some new demos here for you. That'd be awesome. I look forward to it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.